Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Town of Arlington Redevelopment Board meeting on Monday, February 5th. I'd like to call this meeting to order. My name is Rachel Zemberry. I'm the chair of the board. And if the other members of the board could please introduce themselves, we'll start with Steve. Uh, Steve Revelock, good evening. Eugene Benson. Shannon Corman, Houston. Shannon Lowe. And we also have uh, Claire Ricker joining us from the Department of Planning and Community Development, as well as Sarah Suarez. All right, let's go ahead and get started with the first agenda item, which is a review of the meeting minutes. And we will start with the meeting minutes from January 8th, 2024. Um, and I will ask to see if there are any additions or corrections, starting with Ken. No, I have none. Uh, Shana? None. Jean? I have one very minor correction okay. on the third page. There's a <clears throat> paragraph that starts with about a year ago, if people can see that. Yep. The fourth line down, the sentence in the middle starts, the trust funds are supposed to be apostrophe before the S. All right. That was the only one I caught. Okay. Um, Steve, any um, other additions or corrections? No additions or corrections. All right. Is there a motion to approve the meeting minutes from January 8th, 2024, as amended? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Steve. Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. I'm a yes as well. Those meeting minutes are approved. We'll now move to the meeting minutes from January 22nd, 2024. And again, we'll call for any additions or corrections, starting with Ken. None. Shana? None. Jean? None. Steve? None. And I have no corrections either. Uh, is there a motion to approve the January 22nd meeting minutes? So motioned. As submitted. Thank you. <laughs> Second. <clears throat> um, we'll take a vote starting with Steve? Yes. Jean? Yes. Shana? Yes. Ken? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Those meeting minutes have been approved. <clears throat> All right, let's move to our second agenda item, which is the Master Plan Implementation Committee, and I will turn it over to Claire. Great, thank you. So um, as we move into a uh, new master planning process, we're looking to establish a new master plan advisory committee. Um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee of uh, roughly 2015 um, came out of a former master plan advisory committee that was uh, put together in 2012. Um, to sort of guide the process of master planning. Um, we are looking to have a kickoff um, workshop webinar um, with me on February 29th at 6 p.m. Um, to solicit uh, volunteers, people who would like to apply to be on a new master plan advisory <coughs> committee. Um, we're looking to have those applications open probably March 1st through about mid-April. Um, just looking for some new or different voices. Um, the Master Plan Implementation Committee hasn't met in over a year. Um, they have been notified that the intent is to disband and it will just take a, con a confirming vote of the ARB to um, sort of uh, close the loop on, on that. Great. Uh, any discussion, starting with Ken? None. Uh, Shana? None. Jean? None. Steve? Uh, none. Okay. Um, is there a vote to, uh, let me make sure I have the language correctly, is there a vote to disband the Master Plan Implementation Committee in uh, advance of the uh, update to the 2015 Arlington Master Plan? So motioned. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Ken. Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That concludes agenda item number two. Thank you so much, Claire. Great. Uh, we'll now move to agenda item number three, which is the uh, board rules and regulations. And uh, Claire posted an update uh, that has to do with the approval of signs. So I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you. <coughs> yeah, so as part of this um, continuing discussion of update of uh, the ARB rules and regulations, um, Jean was kind enough to put together uh, new wording for rule 18. Um, I think that I have brought up uh, to this board in the past um, some of the um, not difficulties necessarily, but um, some of the gray area with uh, administrative approval um, and uh, my office's ability to um, approve administratively um, certain kinds of signs in certain situations. 
Um, this uh, language that Jean put together, I think, is very clear. Um, makes it clear both to the applicant, you know, um, to the board, and to the and to DPCD what our um, responsibilities are. Um, and so we could uh, open that up for discussion if the board so desires. Great, thank you, um, Jean. Why don't we start with you? I just tried to do what we all discussed <laughs> at the meeting um, a couple of uh, more than two meetings ago now. I guess, and basically what it says is that there can be administrative approval for any sign that meets the zoning requirements if there are no zoning or general bylaw requirements on the property. But uh, the department's not required to provide administrative review, and they can review, um, and at any time they can send one to us, but it shall refer to us if in their opinion, the sign's so unique in such a prominent or important location or have such an effect on its <coughs> surroundings that review by the board would be warranted. So I think that's what people talked about uh, when we had the meeting. Great, thank you. Steve, any comments? Uh, none. Sheena? None, this looks good. Ken? Yeah, I have something a little tangential to this. And I just want to bring it up to the board to talk about it. Uh, right now, signage is falls under zoning and such that it is enforced by inspectional services is there a way us to put the requirements of signage off of zoning and on to um, i'm going to rely on you and ward uh gene on this one here uh to put it elsewhere within uh, uh that's uh under uh, not zoning, but what else you can put under that's not in the zoning? So this way, the town manager can just hire someone to enforce it and not have uh, uh, um, special services. That's this way we can get a little more because uh, they're really busy. I'm not saying that they're not doing their job; they are. They, they're doing a great job, but we need to separate and maybe have a little more enforcement involved so that. The stuff we talk about follows through, and the stuff we don't follow, you know. Because when I go through the town, I see signs all over the place that should not be signs. Stuff that's been there should not be there for more than a couple of weeks if it's temporary. All sorts of stuff. And if we can find someone else to, to sort of enforce it, maybe, you know, you know clearly you can hire a, a part time person and combine it with someone else, but they don't have the jurisdiction while still in zoning. So I was wondering, is there a, you know, maybe we should talk to town council and see. Yeah, I mean, you can talk to the town council. My understanding is we could theoretically file a warrant article to take all of the sign requirements out of the zoning bylaw and put them in the general town bylaws. The disadvantage of doing that would be we would then be out of the picture at all altogether and wouldn't have the ability to do what we do when signs don't meet the standards or we have other concerns about the signs. So that's the major, I think, downside. And then I don't know whether the department could have a role in it if it's no longer in the zoning bylaw, but in the general bylaw. That I don't know. And you're assuming that the town would do a better job enforcing and that's we I don't, don't know. We don't know. Uh, I, just, I would say... I, I, mean, I want we, us to talk about it. We talked about this once before, and I think the last time we thought, wouldn't it be great if there was some way that inspectional services had a part-time person assigned to, to do this? And I think maybe we need a conversation with um, Mike Champa or with the town manager about getting enough in the budget, because that would solve the problem, right? Right, so I think, and Claire, I'm going to throw this over to you. I think that you and I at one point had talked about potentially a, a joint position that was shared between the um, Department of Planning and Community Development and the um, Inspectional Services Department that <clears throat> would not only perhaps um, review signage compliance, but also compliance with 
things like we're experiencing right now, um, the, the special permit conditions and, and other items. Um, and if that's something that perhaps, you know, we could escalate that conversation with um, Director Champa and perhaps contemplate whether or not that could live in the, in the budget that is planning to go in front of town meeting. I think that, that that's, uh, I'd have to go back through my, my notes, but I know that we have spoken about that and what that role could entail um, a couple of different, <clears throat> at a couple of different meetings, uh, because there are some things that are falling through the cracks because there, there just isn't the staff to, to take care of it. And, and having, um, you know, we know how important the signage and the um, care that is taken to maintenance of a facade that that really affects the vitality of a of a business district, and um, or any town of any town, not just not just Arlington, and so um, making sure that you know we have somebody who can enforce those the vacant storefront um, provisions that we have. I mean, there are quite a few different different um, vehicles we have to. Um, ensure that our business districts are kept up and um, um, maintained in alignment with the various zoning codes that we have. No, I, I agree. I think that the, the, the conversation about additional positions has not been an easy one to have lately, mm -hmm. um, but it is certainly something that I continue to advocate for and I can bring up again with Mike Champ. I like the idea of a shared position and not just something that he you know, not, not just another ex inspector for him and his backlog, but something that is um, you know, dedicated to these two issues, enforcement of special per uh, the ARB's uh, special permit conditions, as well as the sign um, code. Um, I just think that just really well. So I'm That's happy great. to bring that back up with the town manager next time I meet with him. I mean, I, I think that to a certain extent, I don't know that it would fully pay for the position, but the number of signs that go up without the proper um, <laughs> permit fees paid to the town sure. um, alone, I think, would certainly um, have at least some offset of this type of, of position. Yeah, and, I mean, I, I too think it's a real problem. At the moment, I also walk around town and say, wow, how'd that sign get there? Or that sign should have been taken down two years ago, yeah. and it's still there, yeah. So I appreciate you bringing that up, Ken. Uh, yeah, just really when businesses go dark, right. the owner is responsible to take down yes, their sign. Are. Yes, they are. And that doesn't seem to happen. Right. Okay. Agreed. Uh, so, all right. I know well, it's we, a little, it was a little off topic, but no, it's certainly under under this category, and it's something that um, we can um, set an intention of following up on. Yeah. Other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> Great. Um, let's see. So for this item, I believe that the discussion we have tonight and that we need to um, advertise this as a vote to approve at our next meeting. This and the other <clears throat> one. Correct. And I wanted correct. to mention something about the other one. Which Please, go ahead. I think everybody had an opportunity to review. In in the reasons that we can reject um, a site plan review, there's only one reason, and I took it out of the CTPC mm -hmm. wording, and they claim that uh, that reason has never been upheld by a court, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. recommended that it be in there. Something like, if despite meeting the rules, the project is so awful and can't be fixed, something like that. But there is another reason we should put in, I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. And that reason would be if someone's commit, um, submitted an incomplete or inaccurate ac application and have not corrected it upon request. And that occurred to me after I mm -hmm. gave this to everyone. So if everybody's okay with it, adding that, I will do a very slight amendment and send the edited one to you, Claire. Great. So it includes that. I have no issue with that, Ken? No. Shana? Yeah. Great. Steve? Sounds good. Okay. Great. Well, we will vote on that, um, on both of those items at our next meeting. Great. Um, 
Let's see. Our next agenda item is agenda item number four, a discussion around the design guidelines. And um, I will hand it back over to Claire. Great. Thank you very much. So, um, and uh, we have had this sort of outstanding project of, of the redevelopment board and DPCD um, for, you know, a, it seems like years now, certainly months. Um, to update commercial design standards um, as, as it relates to the town, and I think you know probably to this board's interest, Mass Ave and Broadway, um, especially. Um, we did do some research and found a document from 2015 which has some design uh, standards for the town of Arlington. These are, I think, a good place to start. Um, a good, good, uh, good you know, place to begin discussion. Um, there are already sort of going through, you can see um, some of the height recommendations and um, you know, other dimensional requirements are, uh, do not reflect you know, our latest zoning um, or our decisions around MBTA communities. Um, but I think you know, for, for DPCD's purposes and, and you know, our office's uh, you know, sort of understanding of this project, we wanted to at least put these back in front of the board or put them in front of the board for the first time if you hadn't seen them. Um, to talk about, you know, how we might best build on this, um, if not um, just create a new design standard whole cloth. Um, so that's uh, also open uh, for the board's discussion. Great. Thank you. Uh, Steve, why don't we start with you? Okay. There's, um, just in terms of context, so these are dated 2015. Uh, this was the year we adopted uh, the current master plan, and it was the year prior to um, the incorporation of mixed use into the bylaw. So there's actually a number of things in the standards that are that are part of the bylaw now, um, in terms of recommending ground floor commercial. Um, the height regulations have come out a little bit different. Um, you know, and we have things standards now for tree planting for fa facade articulation. Um, the whole industrial district. The, yes, this this was also predates the. Uh, updating of the <coughs> industrial district. I mean, there are some things in, in these guidelines that I like, like the um, sort of hierarchy of uh, transit priorities, pedestrians and bicycles and transit and, and automobiles. And I, I think this is, um, you know, I, I think this was a good starting point in 2015, but, um, you know, it's we're at a point now where you know, a lot of this stuff is in our bylaws, and maybe we can build on it a little more. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Gene. I, I pretty much agree with Steve with um, a couple things that I'll add. One is that, um, yeah, there are a couple of places in here, at least, that don't quite match up with the current zoning bylaw, which you'd expect after nine or ten years. But there are also some things in here that don't match up, which I think are okay because there are still things that um, a developer could do if it chooses to. And I'll, I'll just choose one where I disagree with the board about this, but it's in here as an example. They suggest that there be step backs on both the front mm -hmm. and side facades. Mm -hmm. We decided as a board and, and was adopted by town meeting that only the front facade needed step backs. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't be a consideration mm -hmm. that um, there be step backs on the sides, depending upon context, mm -hmm. which is sort of lacking in here. So that's one example. Yeah, the height ones are another where we've changed the height mm -hmm. rules, and this doesn't really reflect it. The, the thing I like about it is it, um, it, it doesn't dictate any particular style, which I think is important. Um, but what I find we could do better on is saying what's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, this basically said something like, use natural materials on the facade, but and then don't use cheap materials. I think if we could be more explicit, more explicit <laughs> about those sorts of things, I think it would be helpful to do that. Much of it I thought was still relevant and good, yeah. so I'm not sure we need to start from scratch. I think we just sort of need to 
update it and think about those sorts of things where the zoning bylaw is done a little better. I, the industrial districts obviously is something that should probably be added um, into this too. Um, and there are some pretty clear design standards in the zoning bylaw for the industrial district. And I think that's the other part, building on what Steve said. I think it would be nice if the next version actually referenced the parts of the zoning bylaw that deal with these sorts of things, you know. So if it's height, you might indicate what the height rules are, things like that. But overall, I think, I think it's still good for a lot of things. Thank this you. is my non-professional view. <laughs> Gina. Um, I, Jean, really appreciated the last thing you said, which uh, the sort of marriage of bylaw and design standards, I think, um, is really helpful and going to be critical here. I think, um, I think where, um, to the extent that we can, come up with something that uh, allows a developer who uh, that, that truly does their due diligence um, to come before the board with a with a proposal that they can feel confident and we can feel confident is going to get approved in a timely manner I think that's really the goal for these design standards let's be um, uh, let's be clear about what we're looking for um, and some of that, or a lot of that, could be sussed out of the zoning bylaw, but um, but this will be a really nice tool once updated to to um, move that forward. Great, uh, Kim. Um, I agree with everybody, what everybody said so far. I think this is a good starting point. I think we have to upgrade, update this a little, like, and get it more conforming to what we have now. Uh, the big thing I want to maybe add to this thing here, uh, the thing set up such where it, says it, uh, it encourages and discourages. I want to add another section in there, and maybe my verbiage is not correct, but uh, encourage, discourage, and then bonuses. And how yeah. the bonuses can be, uh, here's what the bonuses are, here's what they, how they can be used, this is the intent of how they're, and then really go into why we're having these bonuses here and uh, that, that goes into from trees to, to cars mm -hmm. to uh, you know and then and get into a little more of that stuff so I think we need to, and this is a good start uh, I remember seeing this when I first got on the board and I thought we were going to do more of this stuff and this was this is what got me into the board yeah. um, so uh, I think it's a real good start. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, so uh, this this gonna have to be done on a, not at a meeting like this, but it's gonna be done like at all the side meetings where all of us leaves and just mm -hmm. get into the nitty gritties and do yeah. maybe a section at a time or something. Uh, are we gonna set up some sort of uh, committee for that? We could. There is there is a um, appropriation from the town for a consultant for for this. I think it was a year or two ago. That it was because I mean these drawings are great I mean these, these asymmetrics and, and things are a way of good way of explaining things um, much better than what we've been doing in the past not you prior, <laughs> prior you know that we're, we're just doing these flat diagrammatic drawings I think seeing it, it helps a lot mm -hmm. I think it would be interesting to just on that note, Ken, to find out what format we have this in, okay. and whether or not some of these some of these drawings need to be updated yes. to the points that, that folks were making, making. But it's a good start, and it would be a shame to have to to start all over. So um, it would be great to find out if this consultant delivered this in yeah. some sort of an editable format, um, because there are things. Um, Ken, I'm sorry, I, I interrupted. Did you have other no items? No, it's a, th it's a two thing. Okay. <laughs> um, I think this is. I think this is just. Um, um, what you call it? Uh, SketchUp. It it looks like it. Yeah, that's. It was just my question as to whether or not we own the um, 
the editable files. Yeah. Or not. Uh, we can certainly yeah. take a look for that, and if not, I think we can reach out to the consultant too. Great. We should get a proposal from them too. Yes. Uh, see, you know. So I just had a couple of other things to add on. I, I agree with everything that's been been said. Um, I think specifically when it comes to the commercial area, um, talking. Of, I think this is our opportunity to be more explicit than we are in the bylaws about the, for example, the percentage of first floor space um, that we would like to see. Um, you know that what some of the goals are, which we have not been able to. Um, or we've been. Um, hesitant to put that kind of specificity in the zoning bylaws, but I think as a target for a guideline, that might be something worth discussing as to whether or not we'd like to include it. Um, I think that they are, in addition to being more explicit about materials that will and will not be approved, we've certainly seen projects. Um, we've had at times a painful experience <laughs> getting from a first. Um, a first design to where we think the facade needs to go specific to things like articulation um, and particularly around cornice lines and the, um, the, the articulation of the commercial versus residential, if it's mixed use or commercial versus office above and, and just what a sign band should or could be, and some, some of those types of elements, I think that we can be a lot more um, specific in, in showing examples of, of what we would and would not approve. I think um, this predates the current signage section of the, mm -hmm. of the bylaws. I think we did that in 2019 or 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that there are, we built into that a lot more creative options for, for signage, and so I think being able to, again, indicate through some illustrations that we are looking for some, some creativity and, you know, we certainly would be open to um, some really vibrant options within the town would, would be worthwhile. Um, and then the other thing as well is I think we've come a long way with our green building provisions. Mm -hmm. And so being able to identify, um, you know, we had one proposal that came in front of us that didn't go forward that had a beautiful um, kind of living wall and, and green wall proposal. There, there are a lot of really, um, really thoughtful discussions we've had as a town as to what we'd like to see from um, integrated beyond solar panels as green building elements. And I, I think it would be great to push people a little bit and perhaps give them some ideas of, of what we'd like to see so that we're not starting from below square one yeah. at the first time that we review some of these proposals. Something. Yeah. Anything uh, else? Yeah. Please. A couple, a couple of other <laughs> things. Ken reminded me the word bonus is used once in here mm -hmm. in a way that we don't allow oh, under wow. the zoning code. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> and obviously we can't put bonuses in here that the zoning code doesn't allow. Right. But the zoning bylaw does allow some bonuses that aren't mentioned in here, so we might want to what might want to do that. Yeah, I, I agree about sort of the environmental climate issues and whether there's a way to highlight um, some of those in here also. I think would be good, and also to maybe reference the other standards, like we have the whole bicycle parking standard. And that you know the um, the guidelines on how people can do bicycle parking. I don't think they need to necessarily be incorporated in here, but they should be referenced in here. So you know, in addition to referencing the parts of the zoning bylaw, we do have those um, that I think should at least be referenced for bicycle parking. We'll look at native species, etc. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. Great. Steve? Um, yeah, just uh, we do have you know, sort of in a similar vein, there is a, a set of design guidelines for single and two family homes. And uh, during my time on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and I'm speaking for myself and not the, board, the ZBA as a whole, um, I felt like, you know, we got, um, you know, they, they were beneficial to have in terms of at least showing, um, 
know, sort of um, the direction we were, you know, we as a town were hoping to see uh, things go. So I, I, I think that I think it, an update would be a useful endeavor. Great, thank you, Steve. I think that this also begs the question. Um, these are commercial. I think that they are set out as commercial design guidelines mm -hmm. specifically. Um, where do or where could some of the design guidelines for um, multifamily housing live? Um, should those, you know, this talks about the commercial corridor specifically, should those be part of the residential design guidelines um, for those that don't have a mixed use component? Or do we rename these and would these live here? I mean, I think that that's, we, they need to live somewhere. And I, and I think that that's a discussion we should have about the most appropriate place for, for those to live as well. Any uh, other? Yeah, and, and the thing is we don't have design guidelines for residential other than the one and two family. Correct. So this would be an opportunity to deal with both mixed use with residential, which I think you could say this does deal with. Mm -hmm. Although if you look at a lot of the examples there of residential, even though this is a commercial guideline, but also to think about wrapping larger multifamily residential also. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Any other thoughts? Might even be <coughs> commercial corridor guidelines right. more than um, commercial and mixed use and multifamily. Yeah, I think that I, I, that's a great point, Shane. I think that in the document it does reference the commercial corridor at, at one point, and so perhaps renaming it would be enough to be able to incorporate, incorporate yeah. a wider range of um, building typology. Um, Claire, do you have any thoughts on timing, just looking at the upcoming uh, projects that the department might have on, <laughs> on its plate? It would be great to kind of talk about whether this looks like a first half of the year, second half of the year start. Sure. Um, the timeline on this, I think we want to get started on it, writing our RFP as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, you know, with, with some consideration for town meeting and, and you know, the, the um, all of the work required around that, but I do think that you know putting an RFP together, uh, which is where we are right now, is something that we could, you know, we can certainly get done in the next you know month or two um, to try to get it out, perhaps for very early summer, late spring, after, right after town meeting. Fabulous. Yeah. Good. Any other thoughts? All right. Thank you so much. I'm excited to jump into this. I know we've been talking about it for some time. All right, uh, let's move to agenda item number five, which is 882 to 892 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, we did receive an update from the developer, and I will turn it over to Claire to discuss. Great, thank you. Yes, I've been in contact with the developer almost every day about this project, um, and uh, he did ultimately send along um, uh, pictures of the paint uh, that they intend to use on the storefront uh, pieces um, and the paint that they are using currently um, on the exterior of the project um, and that the board had requested a, a spec and we ended up with you know pictures of the cans of paint that they are going to use. Um, I did have a conversation with the developer earlier this week about the louvers. Um, you know I, I will be uh, you know uh, Frank here, um, he's uh, really wanted uh, for this board and for me to tell him exactly what it is um, we would like him to do, although I think it's pretty clear in the meeting minutes and there's in the meetings that we've attended, uh, that we've had, that they've attended um, exactly what it is that we're looking for um, them to do. So I will continue to push um, to get some sort of sample of the louvers, the replacement louver, um, and I will ask for a, a written description of the spec of the paint. Um, I think 
you know, there, there, we did also receive some correspondence uh, about this project as it relates to the affordable um, units. Um, I can say that, uh, you know, this regulatory agreement has gone back and forth between the state and the town at least once. There was a misplaced signature um, on the document at least one time. Um, it was sent uh, back to EOHLC. Um, to the state uh, on January 25th, and we're waiting for the state to turn it around. The next steps there is they will send it to the developer, the developer will execute and then uh, file the uh, deed restriction. Um, so those are the steps, at least, that are remaining on the affordable units um, and where we are, I think, with the um, design issues that we have out there. Great, thank you. Um, any questions, starting with Ken? No. Thank you. Great, Shana? No. Good job. <laughs> yes, thank you for following up. Gene. Yeah, there should be a dentist in the building because it's like pulling teeth. <laughs> no question. Steve. Nothing here. Great. Um, yep, I, I agree. I appreciate you following up on both of those two items that um, we still don't have resolution on, the spec um, and the Uber alternates. And I, I also have, from the same developer, um, he also reached out to me about 455 Mass Ave, which is the project on the corner of Medford and Mass Ave. Um, he wanted to make sure that, um, the, that the board was uh, satisfied and there were no discrepancies between the rendering that you've seen, that was um, what the special permit was issued on, and the construction documents, the, the, the elevations and the exteriors. So staff right now, we are comparing the rendering, um, the permanent rendering with um, the construction elevations to make sure that there are no discrepancies. And if there are, um, we will be back in front of the, to discuss with the board um, at your next meeting. Great, thank you very much for sure. doing that. Is that the pop G and OLC? Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't go by that much, I don't go by addresses. Well, the sign's still on, so. <laughs> Her uh, earlier uh, discussion, <laughs> right? <laughs> Great. Um, so uh, currently reviewing the facades that were approved versus the construction elevation. Correct. All right. Uh, any other questions or comments on 882 to 892 Massachusetts Avenue? All right. We'll close agenda item number five and move to open forum, which is agenda item number six. So anyone joining us this evening? Please come forward, please, and that way the microphone will be able to pick you up. Gotcha. And if you could just introduce yourself, yep. first, last name, and yep. address. Winnell Evans, 20 Orchard Place. Um, thank you guys for following up on um, 882. I've also been following this, uh, particularly because of the affordability snafus. So today I took a look at 190 and 455, the, the most current um, elevations, are, are rather, um, site plans of each and of the units uh, designated as affordable at 190 none of them meet the, the uh, Department of Housing and Community Development uh, uh, requirement for minimum square footage the one bedrooms are all under 700 feet and the two bedrooms that I think they're just a couple of two bedrooms are all under 900 square feet so they are currently not compliant and of the two designated affordable units at 455, only one is compliant. So given the issues with 882, um, and I'm wondering in the, in the horrible circumstances that the state does not approve this, there are already tenants in those affordable units. You know, what would happen to them? Would they have to move? Um, so to, to forestall this, I would like to know what kinds of steps the board might take to um, to uh, get these units in these next two projects into compliance, whether that is a redrawing of the plans, which I'm assuming would probably be the least desirable way to do this, or whether it's a redesignation of which units are affordable. I'm gonna turn this over to um, Claire, who's been working really closely with um, Jim Feeney and, um, ISD, um, yeah. and ISD obviously being um, really the, the ones who are charged with making sure that the, that the units are um, perfect. 
Thank you for pointing that out. I didn't realize that there was a, a, a unit at 455 that was ID for affordable that is non-compliant. It's clear to the town manager and to me that we will not be receiving any kind of waiver based on unit size from POHLC, perhaps ever again after what happened at 833. And so now is the time. This is why I've been in such close communication with uh, the developer. Um, and, yeah, about um, unit size, about which units are designated um, affordable. Mm -hmm. um, regulatory agreement has not been set in stone yet. It's another thing that I'm happy to bring up with um, with the developer the next time I speak with him to make sure that, and I'm, I'm with you, I've seen the, the minimum unit sizes as well. Um, there is, you know, there's no room for any kind of, um, there's no wiggle room there. I mean, it has to be uh, the, the correct uh, square footage. I think the town is, absolutely committed to that and you know on, on my end and my office's end um, we are going to work hand in hand with this particular developer to make sure that you know this this sort of issue with 883 doesn't occur on the next two projects and and just to follow up if this if the um, <coughs> state does not approve this what will happen to the tenants to. That I don't have an answer to. I, I don't okay. know. I do have every indication that the state will approve this, that some of the, you know, at least the, the long, you know, uh, lead time on this agreement has been due to a mix up in signatures. Right. Um, but I, there's no indication from the state that they won't, you know, sign off on the agreement and then, you know, submit it to the developer. If indeed they, they do not you know, sign off, then I, you know, I, unfortunately I don't have an answer to that question. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just it's concerning. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, the, I mean, the state's not in the business of evicting people right. from their homes. Right. I mean, we, we would have to uh, maybe go through some of the process um, or something. I, but I, 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 first of all, I think professionally, I don't think that this would necessarily result in evictions. Second, you know, I, I, I just don't know. Right. And could I also just make one comment on sure. a previous topic? I'm totally supportive of the revision of the, the commercial or corridor design guidelines, whichever they end up being designated. And just sort of a, a point that if they do end up being designated the, the corridor guidelines, that they not then exclude any multifamily projects that are not on a major corridor because mm -hmm. I'm assuming we will have some of those and it would be a shame for them not to be subject to those to those guidelines. Great. So but totally supportive. Yeah, thank you. Thank all. you very much. And with that we will close open forum and move to agenda item number seven, which is new business. And I will turn it over to Claire to see if there's any item under uh, new business. I have no new business at this time. Great. Thank you. Uh, Kim? Nope. Shana? Nope. Jean? Nothing. Steve? Nothing. All right. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn? So motion. Second. We'll take a vote, starting with Kim? Yes. Shana? Yes. Jean? Yes. Steve? Yes. And I may yes as well. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.